Hello everyone and welcome to Solving the Chinese Puzzle with special guests from Unity Technologies. We're very happy to have you here to talk about uh, the Chinese market and what we hope that you will take away from this webinar is some statistics about the Chinese market, challenges and barriers to enter the Chinese mobile market for game developers and studios, and how to distribute your games across China and uh, around the world with the UDP. So, uh, my name is Aaron Demford. I'm the marketing director for Aptuti, and I am joined by Steve Taylor. Thank you, Aaron. I'm Steve Taylor. I'm the product manager for the Unity Distribution Portal, UDP. Very happy to be here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first point we're going to talk about is the Chinese mobile market. Of course, huge, uh, but these statistics, uh, every time I say them, they baffle my brain. Uh, for example, 27% of all game spending worldwide originates from inside of China. So over a quarter of all world game spending is from China, with a, with a really big esports uh, revenue market too, uh, with 13.9 billion as of the end of 2019 expected to grow to 23.2 billion for um, mobile esports. For game revenues, uh, from the end of 2019, we had around $33.1 billion in game revenues, expected to grow to 46.7 billion by 2024. So Aaron, this is really big. So is, is that only mobile revenues, um, the 46.7 billion? Yeah, so the 46.7 billion there illustrates all game revenues. Uh, however, it is expected to be 32 billion from mobile only uh, in 2024. So wow. of the 46 billion, uh, 32 billion will be mobile game revenues. Yeah, and, crazy. and that, that's, that's huge. And does it take into account the, um, the new procedures that now exist around license approvals? Uh, yes, so we will get into that uh, shortly. Um, very good question. I'm sure lots of people are aware of these uh, licenses approvals. We will get into that. Um, don't worry. And um, these statistics do take into account the trends that we're seeing with the approvals as well. And cool. just the last point on this slide are 691 million mobile gamers. So... So uh, as many as Steve said, and as many people are probably aware, there was a uh, license freeze during 2018. Um, we saw a uh, decrease in the amount of gaming approvals uh, given inside of China. And this was due to the fact that the new entity took over the gaming regulations in 2018. The State Administration of Press and Publication, or SAP for short, and this graph just shows the revenue um, difference between 2017 and 2018 as these regulatory um, bodies were created. It caused quite a disruption. Um, you can see even big publishers such as Tencent uh, and NetEase saw a drop in year-on-year uh, -year revenue growth, which can be attributed to those pauses. And just to round off the um, part of the Chinese mobile market, uh, which always I always find it crazy to say this every time, but over half of China, over half of Chinese citizens play mobile games, which I don't think is comparable to any other country in the world. So the mobile market in China is exceptionally huge. Another thing to note is the uh, female gaming market in China. So according to uh, a report by the Shanghai Online Games Association, um, there was a huge increase in um, Chinese female game players reaching 367 million in February. Um, and during the first half of 2019, female gamers uh, consumed around $3.5 billion. So they contributed around $3.5 billion to the game revenue. So it's a really big market, and we're actually seeing quite a lot of uh, IPs uh, focusing on, on female gamers specifically. Um, this one is Tencent's uh, game King Glory, which is one of the largest MOBAs in the world, and 54% of all players 
um, on that game are women. Oh. And another example being uh, Mr. Love Queen's Choice is a Chinese female orientated visual novel game uh, that you can text and chat and uh, call the main characters uh, when you develop. And yeah, over 65 million downloads and the hashtag um, of Mr. Love Queen's Choice. Uh, my Chinese is not good enough to say that. I know the last character is Jurette. Um It accumulated over 5 billion views on social media with that hashtag. Which is just, it shows the virality and the, the interaction that the gamers have with the products that they love here. When they really yeah, enjoy cute. something, they, they jump into it head first. Uh, Annie Pop being another example. Um, this, is, this was the number three most downloaded Android game in May 2020, according to Nuzu. Uh, it has a lot of female uh, players. Uh, I was looking through uh, some of the comments on the game and I found this one. <laughs> Someone paid over 2,000 hours on the game. Um, and essentially she has been playing more than five years. And first thing she does every morning is to wake up and pick the fruit trees or to match those three. And she says she even feels uneasy if she doesn't do it to start her day. And I'm sure this is not a, a, a minority case. Um, so we're seeing lots of engagement with uh, gamers, female and male, inside of China. So, uh, now we will go to the challenges and barriers that one may find when they want to enter China. So for this example, I'm going to be a developer here on my island outside of China. I have developed my game Go Go Football. Um, just been doing it in my part time, but. I've released it on Google Play and iOS, um, and now what's next for my game? Um, I'm interested in China, so I want to know how can I, how can I get into the Chinese market? These are some of the challenges that face me. So the first is fragmentation. Uh, so there is no Google Play Store in China. So the Android market, accounting for around 80% of the market share between Android and iOS, has been split up into hundreds of app stores. Well, and, you know, I, I relate to that specifically, right, with Unity Distribution Portal, but the hundreds of app stores are staggering and, and the scariest part is that it's actually true. So can, can you actually share how many, how many stores do you actually need to address to even hit 50% of the population? So, of course, hundreds of app stores, they do exist, um, with the market share being the majority around, I'd say there's around 30 top stores um so wow. if you can cover around 20 of the top stores you'll be able to hit almost all of the 691 mobile gamers um, of course these that's still a lot more than just two so you're looking at as opposed to just google play and ios you're looking at 20 possible stores in china for you to put your game into and as I'm sure you will be discussing later, with those many stores comes different builds that you have to make for your game. How do I know what um, what requirements from these stores are? And of course, because these stores operate in Chinese, how does how do I, as an international developer, enter these stores from outside of China? It's so that's the first problem I will uh, face is finding those stores and submitting my game to them. The next one is regulations. Um, so there are a, so it, the thing with regulations is there's actually these are from our experience. So we 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 don't suggest anything political, anything supernatural, or anything religious, as well as uh, you know violence, drugs, uh, gambling, uh, substance abuse, etc. And so, Aaron, is is there actually a a list of those regulations and restrictions because that is pretty broad. Yeah, um, I wish there was. Uh, there's no clear list um, for what may get your game disapproved uh, when going through the uh, licensing stage. Um, we have our local expertise in what we have experienced and what the industry inside of China um, can tell you, oh, this was the reason why I got rejected. However, the SAPP has not given out any solid list of things to avoid. So um, 
it's best this is a op this is a case where partnering with a local entity that can have some of that knowledge can help you uh, in the regulation side of things yeah okay and f finally uh, is localization so um, my game is in English it has local social media it has a uh, foreign social media such as Google Facebook Twitter these things are not allowed uh, when you're distributing your game or app in China it's um, the language needs to be localized to simplify Chinese um, so there is actually two types of Chinese um, there's traditional which is spoken in Hong Kong uh, or written in Hong Kong and um, simplified which is the universal um, Chinese uh, written language so simplified Chinese is required for your in-app content and um, your promotional materials as well as removing all of the foreign um, social media and social links so with those challenges in mind uh, let's move on to our next point which is what documents do I need if my game has in-app purchases so you will be required to have two documents uh, an ISBN license and an IP protection certificate um, as I'm sure a lot of people may be aware the recent Apple um, removal of games was due to the fact that a lot of the games on the App Store did not have these two documents. Now the Android market has been compi uh, complying with these regulations since around 2016 but it now shows that even iOS which was before a lot easier to, to publish in-app purchase games into they now must comply with the regulations. Um, so, sorry? Yeah, Aaron, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but you were talking about games with in-app purchases, but will will licenses be required if uh, your games are purely ad-funded? Um, so that's a good question. Um, with the increased, um, well, with the regulations now applying to both iOS and Apple, uh, the answer is that games that rely on ads monetization, they do not require these two documents um, to publish. Um, so you know, paid games with in-app purchases are, are now need to be compliant and have relevant licenses. However, hyper-casual and casual games that monetize solely on ads um, with no in-app purchases are not required to, to get an ISBN prior to launch. Uh, we recommend having an IP protection certificate um, as a lot of stores will require an IP protection certificate at the least. However, this um, document is fairly easy to uh, get with around 45 days standard processing and seven days with an express ordering. Uh, and it protects your intellectual property in, in China, which is very important. So the intellectual property certificate or the software copyright certificate, uh, it refers to the various rights enjoyed by software developers or other rights holders for protecting their intellectual property. These are the steps uh, required in order to get this license. Um, so I won't go through all of these. Uh, you guys will be able to see on the VOD or uh, I will leave it on this screen for a little bit for you guys to read. It's essentially uh, applied by a local entity. So you will need a local entity to apply for this protection for your IP. But I think this is really important because I, I see a lot of people have a perception that um, their intellectual property may be pirated or, or, or taken when inside of China. And this document will give you the full legal rights to be able to remove those, if it does happen, those copy, uh, copycat games. And uh, to be able to publish into more stores that require this. Now, the ISBN. So... Uh, many people may have heard this; these four letters thrown around a lot of times, um, and you know maybe they're unaware of what it means. It can also be called a publishing license. So, what is an ISBN exactly? So, you can think of it sort of like how a, a barcode on a book works. It's just a unique number that identifies this document, this legal license, with the game. 
And the reason why it's called ISBN is because it starts with the letters ISBN. Um, so on all of the games that have ISBN um, during the loading screen or somewhere within the game, you will be able to see their unique number. So the steps for applying for an ISBN is you need to find a local publisher for your game. Uh, you need to have already have a copyright license or apply for a copyright license. The publisher will then launch the application process through the press or an agency. So they, the publisher will then need to work with another local press or agency inside of China to continue the application. And the fourth step is the SAP, <coughs> sorry, the SAP office at the province, province, uh, at the provincial level examines the game build, examines the game content, and then if approved, the SAP office will then issue the ISBN license. Well, Aaron, how long does this take? Because there's quite a few steps involved. I assume it's not, it's not instant. Yeah, so um, it's getting a lot better since 2018. Um, so for instance, in 2020, um, Nico Partners predicts 20 to 30 foreign games will get approval each month. Uh, for a total of around 240 to 360 licenses this year, which is compared with the previous year, 2019, is almost double. Um, I'd say a benchmark is around six months, uh, although the process oh. can take longer. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, it's a uh, it's, uh, legal document, so <laughs> there are many steps required in order to get to the end result. Uh, for instance, the Tencent uh, game, um, Call of Duty Mobile, uh, of course, one of the biggest mobile games ever, uh, they were able to publish it in all of the other regions instead of China. Uh, they actually only recently were able to get their uh, Chinese ISBN license, and that's from a publisher like Tencent, so there is no fast track option. There is simply just a complying and um, continuing these steps until it is approved by the provincial SAPP office. But hey, it's okay. It looks like it's going up a lot more each year. It seems like since 2018, the SAPP process has got more streamlined and it seems like we will be seeing a lot more approvals in years to come. So that is good news. Indeed. So, in terms of some genres that perform well in China, uh, we have puzzle games, uh, arcade, RPG, strategy, and simulation. Um, so puzzle, of course, being like the match-free games. Um, RPGs are, are very popular in China. Uh, they have very comprehensive local Chinese RPGs. And uh, we personally at Tutti have found that simulation games are very popular uh, amongst Chinese users too. Uh, games such as car simulators, truck simulators, etc. The Aaron, the scene here, there's especially there's the puzzle arcade category, the, the the very casual categories. That is that uh, performance based on IP revenue and ad revenue? Yes. Yeah, so these uh, this data is based upon both IAP and um, ads based games uh, across the Android uh, market. So. Some genres that don't perform as well are card games, board games, sports managers, gambling, trivia, word games, and social casino. Um, although the, they still have uh, space to exist within the Chinese market and still can find some success, um, it's just the Chinese users are not um, overly uh, enthusiastic about these specific genres with a market of 691 million people, there is still room for, for any of these genres to perform. So how would me as a developer or a studio enter China um, with all of these aspects in mind? So there is the traditional publishing route, where I can take my app or my game to the big publishers like Tencent or NetEase um, for them to help me enter the market. However, they may ask questions like, what is their return of interest? 
uh, my game's metrics aren't high enough, you know, there's not going to be a, a large amount of reason for, for a big publisher such as them to take on my game. And this is the traditional publishing route that we found, which can also break down in communication. Uh, there are many different ways that this route can stall or stop. So what we are um, as Aptuti is we are a self-service online portal um, for you for developers and studios to publish their games into China from anywhere in the world. They can do it from the comfort of their own home. We have a online portal and dashboard for you to submit and um, you can also find us through the UDP as we will mention later and we will distribute your game across uh, the Chinese app stores. So we've been fortunate enough to see over a 40 times growth um, in both developers coming to us and apps received from 2019 to 2020. So this is really great and um, we hope to continue this growth for both uh, App2T and our partners as well. And by partners, I mean developers that have registered on, on our uh, portal. App2T is responsible for around 38% of the foreign games currently in the Android stores. And we hope that we can increase this share of the pie or the cake. So how, how, how does it work? Um, we have a four-step process um, in Aptuti. The first is to register uh, to make an account on our site. The second is to submit your game. You can submit your APK to us uh, through our portal. After initial content review and um, you have passed that, we will then provide you with the necessary SDK tools to allow for multi-store publishing, um, for local language, for local payment options, for local login options, for local social, etc. And then the fourth step is to publish, to get your game onto our partnered app stores. So these are some of the service offerings that we uh, have. So we have our trial service uh, for the RSPP Basic, which is like an initial feel for the Chinese market. Um, it gives you access to free stores, free translation, and our SDK. The RSPP Plus are for those that want access to more stores and the first document required to get an ISBN, an IP uh, intellectual property certificate. And RSPP Max will have you covered in all of the top stores in China, 20 plus stores with the intellectual property certificate and publishing license. And we also have our deep dive customization program, which is uh, more like a traditional publishing route where we will, um, which gives you even more access to things such as user acquisition, local marketing support and optimization consultation. Speaking of DDCP, let's get into that now. After this part, <laughs> so, next missed up the slides there. So that's the App2T process. Um, now, some of the challenges and obstacles that I talked about before, how, how does App2T solve them? So for instance, in fragmentation, uh, the multiple app stores, we now have, we have more than 25 partnered stores that we can distribute your game in, uh, which cover the top stores in China and um, allows for multi-store publication with one build. For localization, we provide free translation for every game submitted, uh, professional translation, so some of the gaming terms are, are translated correctly into the local language for a better user experience, as well as local payment systems, local advertising networks, and local social network compatibility. And finally, uh, monetization. So for those that have uh, in-app purchase games, um, we will be able to provide the application and monitoring of the IP protection certificate and ISBN documents for our partners. So our premium package, uh, as I said before, the deep dive customization program uh, is an invitation only um, based service where we will um, look we are essentially looking for games that we think will really perform very well inside of China and onboarding them onto our uh, DDCP package. 
So um, our strong interest is mid-core games, but also some of the other genres that we mentioned before previously, puzzle, arcade, strategy, simulation. So what's included? So this will give you access to all of our partnered app stores, support with the game and local marketing, and also we will provide the IP certificate and ISBN on behalf of our partners. And finally, our SDK, um, it provides uh, the login options. It's, it's essentially your tool to get your app ready for China. It will also allow you to see your performance on our partner dashboard. Um, we'll provide local payment options and uh, we'll provide the local ad networks in order to monetize through ads. These are some of the data that you'll be able to see on your partner dashboard. Uh, even going down into device model, connection method, um, your users' locations, your active users' locations, your earnings by the different stores, user retention, daily active users, you know, all that good data that everyone loves. Absolutely. And uh, finally, uh, we also have our 2T Viewer, which is our mobile app uh, that we created for our partners. Um, so you can track your performance uh, of your creations anywhere, on the go, on your phone. This gives you access to your dashboard where you can see your partner account, view your app list, explore your performance data, and also manage your revenue with any time uh, withdrawals from your phone. You can get it now on the Google Play or the App Store. So, with that said, we are very happy to, um, since, 29, since 2019, be uh, an official Unity partner in China. Uh, we are one of UDP's stores uh, covering the Chinese market, but who knows better than the UDP than Steve Taylor himself, so I will now hand it off to him for some more explanation on the Unity distribution portal. Thank you, Aaron. Let me get my screen ready. Okay, we good to go, Steve. All right, so UDP, you've, um, you've heard Aaron mention this name. So UDP is Unity Distribution Portal. I am the product manager for this uh, Unity product. So, you know, the question I always ask developers is, why isn't your game on every app store in the world? And the answer I always get, the first answer I always get is, uh, what app stores because you know a, a lot of you game developers obviously know the incumbents the apple app store or google play you know some of the alternate app stores say samsung huawei but you don't necessarily know all the app stores out there and you know to relate to aaron's presentation when it comes to china uh it's it's an, an even bigger mystery but the problem doesn't really stop at the discovery it's that each store is a relationship you have to build it's a uh, it's uh, an SDK you have to integrate, it's a build you have to submit, etc. So I'm going to tell you that story, right? That story starts with your game. And let's say that you find four stores to distribute your game to. So what does that look like? Take your game and you integrate that first SDK and you get a build. And you're going to uh, gather the metadata needed to submit your game to that store. So. We're looking at a blue SDK, blue build, blue set of metadata, and then you're going to go through the blue store's developer console to upload all that and submit your game. And then congratulations, your game is live on the blue store and it starts generating data, but you know, that data is on the blue store systems and you know, maybe they have a dashboard, maybe they're sending your Excel reports, etc. Okay, now there's a yellow store. So another SDK to integrate, another build to create and manage. The metadata may be different. The upload and submission process may be different. The data is your performance data of your game is going to be also on, on another system. And you can continue, right? Another store, another SDK, another build, another set of metadata, another submission, another location where your data lives. So you know, very quickly, 
your life can become like this. I could go on and on and on with all the different colors, but your life is going to be like SDK, SDK, build, build, console, console, submission. So it, it can very quickly become overwhelming. And this is why many of you are telling us, well, this is why we don't really distribute outside of the Altered App Stores because it's just so much work and, and the IOI is uncertain. There's so much work. What is going to be the revenue going to look like? So that's the problem we looked at with the Unity distribution portal. We thought, what would Ideal look like? Ideal would look like you have a single SDK to manage, right? You have a single build to create and manage. Uh, you just gather all your, your metadata once and for all. And then from a central hub, you can submit to all these stores. And even better, all the performance data is centralized in a single place. So that's really how we are building the Unity Distribution Portal. That notion of having a single SDK, managing a single build and distributing your games to multiple stores from a, single, from a central location. So the Unity Distribution Portal uh, is connected to the following channels, right? There are the OEM channels, Samsung, Huawei, Xiaomi. These um, handset manufacturers have app stores that are preloaded on their smartphones. So there's one store, which is a channel in Korea, which is an, an alliance of telcos. This store is preloaded on all smartphones sold in Korea. Um, there's a partner in the Middle East that distributes for mobile uh, carriers. Uh, there's global app stores up to down. QApp, share it, that, that, that are global, they have a global footprint. And last but not least, there is Aptuti, who is not a store per se, as you've understood from Aaron's presentation. It's a channel that gives you access to China. So these, these are the stores that are right now connected to uh, the Unity distrib distribution portal and to which you can get your game to. So you know, in summary, how does UDP help developers? So first off, you don't have to worry about all of these stores, uh, payment SDKs to integrate. You just have to manage a single build and you can manage your submissions from a single hub. Uh, it gives you still full control over your distribution. If you want to distribute to certain stores, certain countries, not other countries, you can totally do that. And you know, it gives you access to new channels that maybe you didn't even know existed. So, UDP has been, uh, has been publicly available for over a year and we've only recently uh, announced it uh, to the public. These are some testimonials from uh, studios who have been uh, using it. Yeah, so uh, Steve, um, yeah. how, many, how many developers or studios have been using UDP uh, since, um, since it's been right. available? Well, since it's been available publicly, we've had over 360 uh, studios submitting uh, 680 games now uh, across these nine channels. So, yeah, there's, there's already been some traction. Yeah, and developers uh, can find the UDP inside of the Unity engine, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is, well, there is more information uh, on unity.com slash UDP, but indeed there is a, the, the UDP SDK, that white SDK that you integrate in your build, that one is accessible from Unity's package manager, uh, as well as on the Unity asset store. So you can discover it and implement it directly from the Unity editor. And then that single hub where you distribute your game uh, to all the stores from, um, that is also, um, uh, that is a portal that is uh, accessible from the Unity editor and that is anyway uh, re referenced in our documentation from our website, etc. Yes. Great, yeah, so if anyone wants to know more about Unity Distribution Portal, they can find all the documentation they need. Yeah, um, start off at this address, unity.com slash UDP. And yeah, last but not least, it's free, right? So if you're wondering, do I need to have a pro license, a plus license? No, uh, it's free for all users. And whatever revenue share term, whatever revenue share terms you will have with the stores, uh, Unity does not take a cent out of that. So um, it is entirely free uh, for developers. Fantastic. Um, and yeah, we, we've seen um, many UDP submissions uh, come to us. So we're excited to see uh, many more Unity developers 
be able to pick up this free um, service from Unity, which allows for their distribution across the world, um, which is fantastic. I think you guys are doing a great job. Um, so anything else from you, Steve? No, Lovey, I'm done. Thanks okay. for giving me the time to present the Unity distribution portal. No worries. So guys, um, we will be open to some Q&A um, from anyone that has any questions. Um, please feel free to ask them now. Uh, we will just hang around for maybe an, an extra couple of minutes, uh, see if any questions come in. Um, if not, I hope you guys have been able to learn some more about the market uh, of China and uh, the way to enter as a developer or studio. And I also hope you guys uh, were able to learn more about the Unity distribution portal as well. Uh, okay, so I see one question here from Hammerall Burt. So he says, what if I'm using services like Firebase? So I'm um, I'm actually not too aware of what Firebase is. Uh, do you have any ideas, Steve? Yeah, it's a it's a, Firebase is a Google service uh, that can help you do stuff like um, the crash analytics is included in that. It can help you do attribution. So it's one of the Google suite of services, one of the SDKs you would integrate, uh, basically to monitor how your game is doing. Okay. Um, well, I think yeah, it's, yeah. it's a Google service. Yeah, um, so um, if you. it's yeah, <laughs> exactly yeah, <laughs> if it's a Google service, uh, you wouldn't be able to um, have it in your app when you publish it inside of China. But thank you very much, Hammer or Bert. Um, we will put you in the running for uh, the thirty-minute meeting with our DDCP team, um, if you so desire. Uh, right now, you're in the lead because you are one of the only questions. So we will be in contact with you uh, after the webinar. So we had some people from Singapore uh, earlier. We had some hello from Singapore and a hello from Spain. Uh, do, you, do you speak any Singapore? They don't have Singaporeans. They, they need to speak Chinese. I'm in Singapore, so hello from my window. Yeah. And hola para los en España. <laughs> All right, well, um, I think that about covers it then. Um, thank you guys very much for watching the uh, Aptitude webinar series. We will be back in uh, around a month or two to continue our exploration into the Chinese mobile market. And we hope to have um, guests from Unity join us uh, when they are available. So thank you very much for your time, Steve. And uh, if you have any other comments, uh, now's the time. Thanks for having us, Aaron. It was a pleasure. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to follow the AppTuti channel um, for future notifications and you can find more information about AppTuti on our website, our social media, and of course, Unity, unity.com slash Unity Distribution Portal. Thank you guys very much. Bye-bye.